In this lecture, we're going to discuss the equilibria of chemical reactions. We're also going to discuss a few important thermodynamic properties of our reactions. So let's begin by looking at the following chemical equation, chemical reaction. Let's suppose we mix A moles of W with B moles of X. So I took two different reactants, I mix them in a container, and I begin to produce my products, my C moles of W and D moles of Z, or C moles of Y and D moles of Z. Now, in the beginning, the rate of production of my products will be very high, and the reverse rate the rate of production of my reactants will be very low. Now as time progresses, the rate of the forward will decrease and the rate of the reverse will increase until the two rates are equal. At this point, our equation, our reaction, has achieved equilibrium. At equilibrium, the two reactions, the two rates are equal. So my forward rate is equal to my reverse rate and this is known as chemical equilibrium. Now equilibrium is dynamic and that means we still have our products being produced and our reactants being formed but we don't notice any changes because the two rates are equal. Now at equilibrium we can use something known as the equilibrium constant given by the letter K to see how far to the left or how far to the right our equilibrium lies. And this is given by the ratio of the concentrations of products and dividing that by the ratio of concentration of reactants. So, K is equal to the concentration of Y to the C power, where C is our coefficient number of moles of Y, multiplied by the concentration of our Z product to the D power, divided by the concentration of W to the A power, and the concentration of X to the B power. So this gives me uh, information about how far to the right, to our product side, does equilibrium lie. In other words, at equilibrium, we can measure the equilibrium constant K, which gives us the ratio of products to the reactants. In other words, if our products are much more stable than our reactants, that means our equilibrium will lie to this side and our K will be greater than 1. Remember, when K is equal to 1, that means the ratio of products is equal to ratio of the reactants. When K is greater than 1, that means we have much more of our products than our reactants. So that means this side is more stable. But what exactly is the relationship between our energy of the starting materials and the products and our equilibrium constant? Now, recall that the more stable the products, the more products that we will produce. Well, we just said that. That's true. And the relationship between our energy of the products and reactants and equilibrium constant is given by the following formula. So the change in Gibbs free energy under standard conditions, standard state conditions given by this uh, not sign here on top of the G, is equal to negative of R times T, where R is the gas constant, T is our temperature in Kelvin, L is our natural log, and K is our equilibrium constant. So this gives us a relationship between the energy of reactants and products and the equilibrium constant, the K. So what this equation tells us is the following. When our K is greater than 1, this number is negative and our change in Gibbs free energy is negative. And that means our products are more stable than reactants. They are lower in energy than our reactants. Remember, this is simply the change in energy between our final products and our starting materials. So for example, if we draw our energy diagram for some reaction, let's say this reaction, and this is our starting materials, our reactants and products, notice how the products are lower in energy than our reactants, and that means the change is negative. So if we take a smaller number and then minus a larger number, we get a neg negative value. So that means our products are more stable and, and so our K will be greater than 1. Now, a lot of the times whenever we draw this energy diagram, 
we either use change in Gibbs free energy or change in enthalpy. Now, change in enthalpy or the enthalpy of formation given by change in H with the not sign, the not sign once again refers to state and state conditions of one bar pressure for gas molecules and one molar concentration for liquid or uh, aqueous molecules. So enthalpy of formation is the difference in the bond strength, the bond energies between the reactants and the products. And note that even though sometimes we equate change in Gibbs and change in enthalpy, these are not the same exact thing. So once again, if our change in H is negative, that means the bonds produced are more stable, they have less energy than these bonds. And so this is more stable, this is less stable, and that means we have negative change in H. So this refers to an exothermic reaction and the products have more stable bonds than reactants. While in this case, when this is positive, that means we have an endothermic reaction and the reactants are more stable, they have more stable bonds than our products. Now notice that when we have a negative change in Gibbs free energy, that's not an exothermic, that's an exergonic reaction. And for a positive change in Gibbs free energy, we call it endergonic. Now the exact relationship between change in Gibbs free energy and change in enthalpy we'll discuss in a future lecture. But you should know that these two things are not the same things even though sometimes we use the change Gibbs free energy on the y-axis and sometimes we use the change H on our y-axis. So in this case we have the following reaction in which A becomes B then becomes C and becomes D. So notice that this is no longer change in Gibbs, this is change in enthalpy. So that means when we go A to D, there is a negative change in our enthalpy. So that means the bonds produced here are more stable than the bonds in A. Notice also that when we go from A to B, our change in H is positive. But as long as the overall change in H is negative, this reaction will be very likely to proceed. Even though we have an endothermic reaction here, our overall reaction is exothermic and that means A will be very likely to produce D. In other words, as long as we have enough energy to overcome this relatively high activation energy, as long as we can produce some of B, B will produce C and C will produce D, and according to Le Chatelier's principle, as we decrease B to produce C and D, A will keep on producing B, and so eventually a lot of the A will be converted to our final products D.